In April, a group of men yelling homophobic slurs jumped Malaysia Booker in a parking lot, and a video of the beating went viral. Malaysia spoke out about the assault at a rally. This time it was me, the next time it could be someone else. Our time to seek justice is now. If not now, when? Malaysia, Malaysia. On May 18th, she was found dead from a gunshot to the head. She got jumped the day after my birthday. And when she came to my house, like, what was so crazy is that after she got jumped, her spirit wasn't even broken. Like, she was broken, but Malaysia was so full of love, like, you couldn't hold a real B down. <laughs> 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 Malaysia Booker was one of five trans women murdered in the U.S. so far this year. She was one of 133 killed in the last six years, more than two-thirds of whom were black. I want to see everybody's face. <laughs> Miko Hicks is a friend of Malaysia's. Do you think if the video of Malaysia getting attacked hadn't gone viral and hadn't been seen by as many people as it was, that her death would have gotten as much attention as it has? No. No. It wouldn't have. She'd have been another trans woman that got killed. She didn't want to be public. Malaysia was terrified after this happened. What she wanted to do was let it all go. Malaysia had reason to be afraid. Most murders of Black trans women happen in the South. But Dallas is supposed to be different. Since at least the 1970s, it's had a vibrant LGBT community concentrated in the historic neighborhood of Oak Lawn. But Oak Lawn has changed drastically over the past few years. Today, the neighborhood is 75% white, with an average income of $60,000 a year, more than twice as much as in South Dallas, where Malaysia lived. Tell me a little bit about Dallas, and specifically about being trans in Dallas. When I first came out, probably about 20 years ago, the Cedar Springs, Oak Lawn area was covered in all kinds of people. White, Hispanic, black, trans women all over the place. What they did to get rid of it, they knocked down everything, built these really new expensive high-rise apartments with the little shopping centers in the bottom of them and made everything pretty and ritzy that we couldn't afford. It makes us feel like we're not wanted anywhere. We're not wanted in the black community. We grew up here, we live here. We're not wanted here. And now we're not wanted in the gay area either. The Dallas Police Department refused our interview requests for this story and has said there's no evidence linking the murder to the beating. But a week after Malaysia's death, it held a town hall at the Resource Center, a long-standing LGBT organization in Oak Lawn. I want to take a moment to emphasize that the Dallas Police Department stands in support of the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, we Several white people in attendance praised the police department for all the progress it had made in relating to the LGBT community. Mine really isn't a question, it's a thank you. 16 years ago, I was elected as the Democratic precinct chair in the Oak Lawn area. And while I was working my precinct, I was stopped by Dallas PD and challenged as a prostitute. I thank you so much for the drastic change because the encounters I have with the police now are very, very different. Thank you. But this was one of the first opportunities people had to ask the police about Malaysia's murder. And the meeting became a case study in intersectionality. As we hear this conversation about Malaysia, we continue to say LGBT, 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 LGBT. But Malaysia also was a black woman. And this crime happened in a predominantly black part of town. 
You know, why are we not hosting, you know, a meeting like this in Oak Cliff, East Dallas, where it happened? And talk about, you know, what does that mean for that, to you know, that conversation to happen? One of the issues is the lack of trust. I think this is important for anyone in the room to hear what do you need specifically from the community? How can we contact? What does that look like? The public is encouraged. They can call the tips line. They can call Crime Stoppers. They can call the Dallas Police Homicide Unit. We're asking the community to get involved. That community is a no snitch community. They're not going to give anybody up. You have to be proactive and get on the sites and look. These people wanted the world to know that they beat that girl up. They wanted the world to know that who they were and that they did it. Leslie McMurray is the Trans Education and Advocacy Coordinator at the Resource Center. So there's what, what appears to be a very progressive and inclusive community for LGBT people here in Dallas. Is it that way for everyone? Is it that way for Black trans people? I would say not as much. Uh, I certainly enjoy privilege that many don't. Uh, I live in kind of a safer suburb on the north part of Dallas. My wife is an attorney, uh, so we have a pretty good life, and I'm well aware of that privilege that exists. A lot of people look at a place like Oak Lawn, which is very welcoming, has this history of being a very safe sort of queer place, and yet they see it as being exclusive or unattainable, right? Why is that? Well, I, I, gentrification in a word. That, that has a racial component to it, right? Yes and no. I mean, it certainly has a racial component, but you can't define it solely by race because it's not a case of black people are poor and white people are rich, or it's poor. And poor doesn't know color. Money doesn't know color. And the night begins. Ugh. Ugh. It's too big. Yeah. It's, just, it's a little too big for me, to be honest, but, you know, boots run small. So the I friends gotta, like, Malaysia oh, left behind yeah. say they have no one to rely on but themselves. You know, somebody got to go, come up here and put on a show. But it ain't all that bad. Robin Crow, who goes by Pocahontas, is one of them. Last Saturday, both Malaysia and Pocahontas were scheduled to perform at one of the last black bars in Oak Lawn. Cedar Springs is it's, it's more where the Caucasian people go hang out or either the... Um, uppity crowd. Was it, uppity? it became that way not too many years ago. We used to have a, a club over there called Havana's that we would go to, but even in Havana's we would get harassed and stuff, dragged out of the club, pepper sprayed and stuff like that. That's supposed to be the place where, where the LGBT people are safe and comfortable in theory. It, and it is for people that look like you. But for people that look like me, it's not a safe place for us. 